Hurricane Ian is barreling towards the Florida area, and today it's strengthened into Category 4. The wind speeds are up to 155 miles per hour, and it's just 2 miles per hour away from being upgraded to a Category 5. So it's very, 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 very close to being Category 5. In Cuba, they have already lost power. So as it like past Cuba, it's heading towards Florida. They already lost power. And then there has been a tornado watch issued. So there are several tornadoes likely as the hurricane uh, enters the Florida coast area. And the tornado watch is expected to remain in place until 5 p.m. Eastern time. Forecasters say that Hurricane Ian is supposed to hit, it's expected to hit the west coast of Florida today, Wednesday. So it is fast approaching. The hurricanes are, they really are just a huge thunderstorm, but they've got so much power to them that it's very um, intimidating. Uh, the The wind is a crazy sound. Like they always say around here, you know, tornadoes are coming when it sounds like a freight train. Um, it's very much that way, except it just doesn't stop. It goes on for hours and hours. Um, the rain is hitting the buildings so hard that you think it's going to actually break through um, the walls and the roof uh, they actually the winds can rip the roofs off um, we were blessed where our house didn't lose the roof we did have a hole in our roof afterward but our neighbor's entire roof ripped off and um, the corner of it hit our house as it was blowing away and landed in our backyard and we had to get a chainsaw and cut it apart and then sledgehammers and break it apart and that took days um, to drag that out of our backyard we were without power for a month uh, we had a generator that basically ran the refrigerator so we would have food <laughs> at the time there were no cell phones but now a new problem would be cell phone towers so even if you are able to charge your phone there's probably not going to be towers working for a while back in the last time i was around a hurricane we of course had the landlines most of you probably don't even know what those are anymore but they were landlines and we were without a phone for a couple months as well uh, spent a lot of time on the roof doing patch jobs and you found nails and shingles from roofs all over and branches and like it was the trees are basically ripped to looking like um, little toothpicks sticking up out of the ground where it comes through and something very strange is the sky is green and not just during the hurricane but like for several days after the sky stays like this ominous green color, which is really strange as well. Um, takes a long time to clean up after and they can cause an obscene amount of destruction. And like tornadoes, hopefully everybody takes it serious and uh, gets away. The storm surge is wild too, kind of like a tsunami where it pulls the water out away from the coast and then it comes back in like huge levels so if you live anywhere near the water you need to evacuate as well so it's definitely a learning experience and something intense to be a part of and, and be around this storm is kind of crazy where it's not most of them they can kind of track the path and from the get-go they haven't been able to track this one it's they've had different paths you know one hour and then the next hour they've got a different path for it and it's done it again it was supposed to kind of hit more up tampa and then go on up into uh, the tallahassee area and now it's lower and it's cutting across florida below tampa and it's going to go right through Orlando, which, by the way, Disney World, prepping Disney World for a hurricane is very interesting, too. Um, and then across to the Atlantic Ocean. And then it's supposed to swing back and hit Jacksonville and up into Savannah, Georgia and some of those areas. So it's very strange, the path that this one is taking. At Disney World, it's crazy because most of the rides are in buildings, which keeps them from getting major damage um, but one of the things if you've ever been, ever been to Disney World is Cinderella's Castle and has the tall um, towers that are part of it but they were very intelligent when they built it and they actually get a crane in there and they take off the tops of the towers and there's caps that they put on and then they store the tops of the towers Disney World is actually 
not on the ground level. It's on the second level and there's tunnels and everything underneath that people don't really know about. And for example, you will never see anyone emptying the garbage because they do it from underneath. Um, cast members travel around in these tunnels underneath as well to get to wherever they're working that day. But they have a way of storing the tops of those towers um, as well. And then of course they'll spend days cleaning up, for example, Animal Kingdom where they have live animals and vegetation and stuff they'll spend several days uh, cleaning that up but they do have speaking of animals they do have areas where those animals are kept safe just like the zoos in florida have to have that as well where they can put the animals to keep them safe